departing Singapore, we are setting out to cross the largest body of water on our planet, the Pacific Ocean. While the DF-50 is a very capable platform, it is still a small plane considering the amount of water lying between us and California. After a relatively short night in Malaysia, we face the first of four long flights. For each of them, we'll be in the air for well over 10 hours. With flights that long, we will have a lot of time to kill. We will also face the biggest challenges of our undertaking, as the weather in the tropics is hard to predict and favorable winds are crucial for the successful outcome of our mission. Yet, facing these challenges rewards us with layovers in places with pristine nature. Arriving on the island nation of Palau, after a 12-hour flight from Malaysia, we took the time to recharge our batteries by exploring this paradise in the Western Pacific. Being supported by Pacific Mission Aviation at Karor Airport, we followed their recommendation to overfly the Rock Islands on our departure to Guam. And as with our layover on the ground, it sure did not disappoint. Seeing no land for hours up in the air, Matt and my mood drastically lifts whenever we spot an island or atoll sticking out of Pacific waters. Being pilots, even more so if an airport is built on it. We experienced first-handedly how dependent on air travel nations such as the Marshall Islands are to remain connected. Yet, especially our layover in Majuro helped us better understand that climate change and rising sea levels significantly impact life on the atolls. Seeing how little land the runway in Majuro is built on, you can grasp that life here will likely change if we fail to address global warming in a timely manner. Also, aviation requires timely solutions to support the future of these landmasses in the Pacific. While not nearly as drastic as what the islanders would face, if we fail, we likely also lose these stepping stones indispensable for crossing the ocean in a small aircraft. As COVID regulations in place meant we were not allowed to enter Majuro, we kept our layover to a technical stop. So after a four hour rest and fueling up the aircraft, we got ready again to depart for the second night in a row. Bound for Hawaii, over 1900 nautical miles away and with forecasted trade wind influence on the first bit of this trip, we knew advancing the power lever in Maturo will likely result in being in the air for over 13 hours. Apart from yawning, a lot, we crossed the date line on this flight, so we traveled a day back in time. Other fun activities included observing peculiar shaped clouds, checking oxygen flow at altitude, and calculating fuel remaining on board. Naturally, we also had to eat and stay hydrated, yet, as one would expect, both were kept at a minimum. After more than half a day in the air, turning inbound for Honolulu was a welcoming change. Having the DA-50's registration start with a hotel meant the approach controller referred to us as a helicopter a couple of times. Let's just say that with our levels of fatigue, we laughed a bit more than could be expected. Nonetheless, our concentration levels had to be on spot to make a landing in a stiff crosswind at Honolulu.
Luckily, the DA50 makes it easy for the pilot. Waiting for favorable winds for our final lag over the Pacific, we got the unique chance to explore Hawaii from above in a DA50. Southwest 2297, helo ground, push your discretion. Flaps take off. Speed check, flaps take off. At the end of our island hopping flights, we positioned ourselves in Hilo on Big Island from where the distance to California is shortest, yet it's still over 2000 nautical miles away. And after spending 10 nights in Hawaii, night 11 would be the one to depart. This also meant that mission support of our gold partner, Swiss International Airlines, based in Zurich, was once more active on our behalf. Apart from their regular duties, tracking the progress of all Swiss long-haul flights and informing the pilots of any new developments or emerging weather trends, the team kept a watchful eye on our progress over the Pacific. Mission support received the weather information on which the Diamonda team planned the flight's route and the crew based their decision to depart on. Using the same forecast products as us, Mission Support relayed the most up-to-date weather information, especially wind components, to us, sending us text messages through satellite communication on an hourly basis. To make sure we had adequate endurance, we had a collapsible ferry tank sitting on the rear seats of the DA-50. Traveling with the spacious cabin of the aircraft meant we could easily turn around in our seats in flight and check on the tank and other equipment located behind the cockpit. Nonetheless, after wearing survival suits for more than 13 hours and having flown the last 50 hours, mainly over water, seeing the US West Coast pop up was quite the sight. Flying the approach into Monterey, we were both grateful and at the same time amazed for how well the DA-50 and its CD-300 performed over the Pacific waters. No strange indications, warnings or vibrations. Just a fuel-efficient machine making its way from A to B.